welcome back to another session for our agriculture and rural development for the board exam. Uh, today's topic we are going to do on the uh, factors which affect the crop production. So before going any further, if you guys haven't subscribed to our channel, do uh, for subscribe and you can also click the bell icon for further notifications. All right, and if you guys have joined our Telegram group as well, you can do join the group and where you can discuss and ask about all your queries out in the group, all right? Uh, coming to the topic, uh, the first thing here is that the crop growth can be broadly classified um, into or the factors which affect the crop growth uh, basically is by two categories. The first one here is through internal factors, all right? So uh, internal factors, these are nothing but um, the factors which are influenced by the genes or the genetic makeup or the hereditary characteristics in the plant, all right? Um, in the same way that uh, plants also have these genes in them, in the same way, uh, animals or even us humans, we have genes in ourselves which display out the characters, right? Or the traits that we have at the moment. Uh, another factor that is affected, uh, that the crop growth is affected by, is the external factors. And when we're talking external factors, this is one of the very important uh, factors, I would say, right? And uh, the, some of the factors under this we have is climatic. All right, when we're talking about climatic factors, climatic factors basically includes the uh, temperature, the solar radiations, the rainfall, precipitation, the gases in and around the whole of uh, uh, your atmosphere, right? And coming to adaptive factors, this is also one of the very important uh, factors which influence the crop growth, the proper development and um, growth of the plant. Uh, especially within the yields also it affects is the soil, all right? So adaptive factors would include all your soil, all right? Uh, so this is very important as the plants, they get your food through the soil itself. So uh, the soil is also a very important factor. Number C we have is biotic factors. So biotic factors are the factors uh, like other microorganisms uh, which affect the uh, the crop production or the uh, normal development of the crop. Um, all right. So another example I'll give here is of a weed, right? A weed. Uh, this is a plot of land. So we are growing some plants out here, and we also have some weeds out here, all right? In and around. So so basically these plants out here. Uh, which is grown along with the main crop would uh, definitely fight uh, with the main crop for sunlight, for space, for nutrients, right? And in that way, they are going to uh, compete with them and that thereby affect the crop production or the normal growth and development of that main crop, right? So this can be in negative form as well. And it can also be in positive form as, uh, by uh, when we incorporate it with legumes. So legumes are actually good for fixing on the nitrogen, uh, unavailable nitrogen, and they make it into available nitrogen in the plant, in the soil. And therefore, these legumes can also help when we grow these legumes or the companion planting uh, that we talked about in the previous lectures, if you remember. And companion planting as well, they can positively affect the uh, normal growth and development or maybe boost the uh, growth and development or the crop production of that particular uh, time. Uh, another uh, biotic is not only about the plant-plant relation, it can be both flora and fauna as well, right? Um, when we're talking about fauna, um, these biotic factors uh, where the other living microorganisms which is present in the soil such as it can be nematodes nematodes are also uh, microorganisms microscopic microorganisms which can be harmful which are harmful as well for the uh, plants uh, for the plants uh, we can also take an example of this bacteria or the fungus uh, which are which are there in the soil so this can also have a negative impact on uh, the plants causing it uh, or giving it a lot of uh, disturbances or hindrance in their normal growth and development by 
diseases or as pests, right? Another example, a uh, positive example that I would give, or beneficial example, is by the presence of earthworms in the soil. So they say that earthworms, uh, they are good in the soil, they make this uh, soil structure better, right? And again, it makes it more arable and thereby you can also get this vermicompost compost from it. Uh, so that's how, and that's way they can, it can be a positive as well as negative uh, impacts on the plants. Um, right, num number D out here is on physiographic. So physiographic is just nothing but a study of all these uh, materials, the physical materials found on Earth, like the uh, landscape of the Earth. Uh, it can be the streams, the water bodies, or the mostly the geographical uh, features of the Earth. All right. So another last one here we have is a socioeconomic. Socioeconomic basically uh, related to as the social as well as economic benefits of the uh, person or of the farmer. So for example, I would give here is that if the farmer is from a marginal farmer, if he doesn't have much money or if he doesn't have much capital to invest in his per, uh, in his farm, as compared to a very um, well-to-do farmer, right? So if you compare this both both these farmers, the a farmer with a poorer background who does not have the enough uh, the capital to invest in the input and to give a, a will have a def will definitely have a lower crop production or that that crop production of that uh, particular uh, by the particular farmer won't be won't yield much as you compare it to the a farmer who has the money or who has the benefit of putting in a lot of inputs and for investing and the inputs for the higher crop production. So in that way, the socioeconomic can also affect the uh, crop production as well as in the proper growth and yield of the plant. All right, so these are some of the factors. Um, now coming to the, uh, coming to, Coming to talking in detail about these factors, the first one we talked about was this internal, uh, which is also known as genetic factors or the hereditary factors, as you can see. Uh, these, the list out here, these are uh, the given features or the characteristic that uh, uh, that a plant can adapt due to these genetic characters. So these uh, are influenced by the genetic makeup of the plant or the genes which is present in the plant and thereby these are the ones that uh, give out these characters in us right so in the same way like we humans also we get this genetic makeup and the genetic uh, differences in every individual we get from our parents or our ancestors and that's way even us we uh, give out these uh, whole different characters and traits right so the same with plants also they show the same line of uh, arrangements as well as if they show different traits and different characters and some of the characters can be uh, done through uh, this genetic makeup of the plants so these uh, one thing that I want you all to remember here is that when we're talking about the genetic makeup or the genetic uh, factors these are not influenced by the environmental factors or the factors outside them right so these are not influenced Right. Um, coming to the first characters that they have, it can also give out the high yielding ability. So I'm not going to go in detail as uh, this much of information is more than enough from the exam point of view. So just know the some of the characters that the genetic makeup can do. All right. Um, all right. The second one, a character that it can have effect on the plant is on the early maturity of the plant. Right. Where the uh, it will have an early maturity and. It uh, and it will flower early or maybe produce the food early okay another one here is resistance to a uh, lodging so lodging is a condition uh, mainly in the cereals where the neck of the stem bends over right so this is suppose this is the plant or this is the grain so the neck so the stem bit at the edge where the grains are forming they usually bend over so this is called what lodging is um, this is very common in cereal crops i'm not noting down why this is very important okay so it also gives a resistance to lodging it also gives resistance to drought and salinity tolerance it, it has it, also, it has shown uh, the tolerance to insect pests as well as diseases 
um, chemical composition of the grains can also be altered through this genetic makeup. All right, and we also have the quality of the grains, like whether it's uh, the grain is coarse or whether the grain is fine. For example, I would give an example of a basma, basmati rice, right? If you compare the basmati rice to a normal other local rice, then definitely the grain size is also bigger, longer, more finer than the other um, rice that we get. Uh, okay, the last one out here is on the quality of the straw, whether it can be sweetness or whether it can be juiciness of it. Right, an example for this is sugarcane itself. Some of the sugarcane that we get, uh, they may be less juicy or maybe they, they may be less sweet as compared to the other uh, crops, right? Other type or the variety of um, sugarcane. Uh, coming to, so this is all about the internal characteristics. So internal characteristics, uh, it's better to just know the, uh, we won't be getting into detail, it's better to just know the Characteristic that they this give they give out. All right. Okay. Uh, coming to another slide we have is on the external characteristics. So we've already talked about the climatic what climatic uh, characteristic would be, and uh, uh, we already talked about what the deficit characters are: the biotic, physiographic, and socioeconomic. Now coming to the Coming to the climatic factors, all right, this is one of the most important uh, factors as these can have a different categories under all the factors which affect the normal growth and development of the plant. Uh, the first one is here is precipitation. Uh, we're going to talk a bit more in detail uh, just in a moment. We have precipitation, we have the temperature, we have atmosphere humidity, which is also known as the relative humidity, okay? So, you, and this is normally uh, expressed in terms of percentage, all right? Um, we also have solar radiation. Uh, don't forget the wind velocity. And lastly, we have atmospheric gases, uh, right? And now let's come in to let's discuss all of these a bit in detail right now, right? Uh, so what do you mean when we talk about precipitation? So precipitation, it includes all the water uh, which falls from the atmosphere, okay? So this precipitation can be in the form of a rainfall. Uh, it can be in the form, it can be in the form of snow, Hail, right? Do so it can be in the form of any of these. So just the water which comes down from the atmosphere. So this is what precipitation is. Um, it has a huge impact on the uh, on on the uh, say about the on the growth and development of the plant. Right, the first influence that it has is on the influences of the vegetation. And the second one here is a trace of a cultivated species. And lastly, it has an effect on the crop yield of the crop. All right, so uh, when, we when we're talking about the influence of vegetation, so uh, basically the precipitation, which is equal to the rainfall, right? So in heavy and in uh, evenly distributed um, areas where the rainfall is uh, evenly distributed, the crops like rice can be grown, right? Uh, and the tea or the rubber or coffee, they can be grown during the uh, Western Ghats. Um, another example that I would be uh, giving here is uh, that a uh, low and uneven distribution of this rainfall, for example, in the dryland agriculture, uh, right, where drought resistance crop like uh, sorghum or pearl millets or minor millets, they can be grown because they are more, have tolerance to drought, all right? So that's when it can affect these choice of cultivated species. So uh, with the rainfall, if it's high, uh, if there's high rainfall in that area, then we can go forward with uh, crops which need higher rainfall, like sugarcane also needs a higher rainfall, right? Um, but in dryland agriculture, if there, the rainfall is erratic, oh, oh sorry, if the rainfall is low in that area, then we can go for those millets growing of those millets, right? So these are some of the uh, major influences that 
presentation of the rainfall has on the growth and development as well as on the crop production of the, uh, of the plant. Uh, coming to the effect on the yield of the crop, so basically if the rainfall is very bad or if the rainfall is low, uh, so for a plant to grow, to bloom or to even flower, they need a lot of rainfall, right? They need rainfall, but optimum amount of rainfall, not too much, not too low. So if these uh, rainfall patterns, it changes, then definitely is going to affect the yields of the crop as well. All right, so these are some of the factors or the reasons why how uh, the precipitation or the rainfall affects the growth and development and in turn the production of the plant. Um, all right, um, coming to the temperature. Uh, so temperature is the measure of the intensity of the heat, okay? Measure of intensity of the heat and temperature also plays a very important role in the normal develop in development uh, these are some of the six uh, major factors or its role temperature's role on the proper growth and development um, so the range of temperature uh, which is uh, optimum for the maximum growth and development in all of the agricultural plants is from 15 degrees celsius okay till 14 40 degrees celsius so this is considered as the optimum or the maximum production or the maximum range of temperature where the crop can go up to its maximum uh, production uh, all right so um temperature actually can influence uh, on the crops and the vegetation in the following. The first one is distribution of crop plants and vegetation, right? Uh, we already talked about the different types of, uh, in the classification, we were discussing about the classification of crops. We discussed about the different types of, uh, I'm not sure whether you guys remember, but we discussed about the tropical crops, the temperate crops, right? So this is the reason why the temperature, they, uh, affect the distribution of this crop and vegetation belonging to the tropical through the Amazon. So this is the main reason why some of the crops can be found in the Arctic region or some of the crops or the plants, they can be found in the Amazon of the very um, humid or dry area region, right? Uh, another one is that temperature also affects germination, growth and development. Um, so temperature affect the normal germination of the seed okay and we also it also affects the leaf production as well as and the expansion or the growth of these leaves okay the uh, fourth one here is a physical and chemical processes so it can act as a catalyst for example uh, in the in the in the role of photosynthesis in the role of transpiration as well it uh, uh, temperature plays a very important role in a bacteria as a catalyst without light or without temperature photosynthesis or evaporation or transpiration would not be occur uh, it also plays a very important role in flowering okay flowering uh, it needs a, a particular range different plants different different plants and different crops they need a, a different range of temperature for it to grow properly or flower properly um, another one last year is on solubility of different substances right so which they can take up or the nutrients that they can take up for the soil so these are some of the factors or the uh, temp the influences that temperature has on the uh, crop or the uh, normal development of the plants uh, so coming to the relative humidity so it is also known as atmospheric humidity uh, right guys so this water is present in, in the atmosphere in the form of invisible water all right or the invisible water vapor and this is known as the humidity okay and this also has a major or uh, huge uh, uh, impact or an effect on the uh, crop production and the crop growth and development the first one here is the relative humidity the influence the water requirements of the crops right since the if the relative humidity is high or the humidity is already high in the atmosphere then that 
crop will be needing a lesser amount of water, all right? Because he is he, the, he is already getting the moisture from the air, okay? Um, another one out here is that the related humidity of about 40 to 60 percent is suitable for most of the crop plants. Uh, guys, uh, whenever you guys are studying, try to remember all these points, uh, these factual points, all right? So these are very important from the pers uh, exam perspective. Okay, uh, okay, and the third one here is that very few crops can perform well when the related humidity is 80 and above. If the related humidity is more than 80%, then um, it will hamper the growth and development of the plants. So, what happens is it may affect the crop production. Okay, but uh, it's not for all the crops, guys. There are certain crops which also need a higher related humidity. Um, right, so now the one out here is that higher the uh, RH, right, which is the relative humidity, uh, higher the chance for outbreak of pests and diseases. As these, um, whenever there is water vapor or water in the atmosphere, then there are high chances of the, of it getting affected by fungus because fungus and bacteria they grow where there is high moisture. So in that way, higher the relative humidity or the water vapor in the atmosphere higher the chances of it getting affected uh, by funguses and diseases um, or bacteria as well, all right? So this is what how a relative humidity affects the normal growth and development of the plant, okay? Uh, coming to the solar radiation, uh, solar radiation also it plays a very important uh, role as uh, simple terms, solar radiation is nothing but light, okay guys? So, we all know that light is uh, very important for the new growth um, and development of these plants. Uh, it also affects the processes like photosynthesis, transpiration, evaporation, all of the um, natural processes that occur in the plants. This can be only done through the presence of light. Okay? All right. Now coming to the first thing here is that the solar radiation it controls the distribution of temperature and also a thereby distribution of the crops in the region. Since this light controls the whole distribution of the temperature, right? And we all know that how temperature affects the vegetation uh, where the crop is suitable, where the crop is grown, right? So it is indirectly uh, affecting the distribution of the crops and the vegetation. Uh, another one out here is that uh, the even um, the uh, light, the presence of light is needed right from the start when you sow the seeds, right, or when they start to germinate. Okay, till the post harvest. So when we talk about post harvest, harvest is the time when we pluck out the plants, uh, the, the the edible part. Or the economic part from the crop and so this is very important right from the germination when we sow the seeds when it starts to sprout the leaves start to sprout from so, uh, from the seeds till the post harvest not even harvest okay guys so the post harvest where uh, to light or light also plays an important role in the um, in the post harvest of right after the harvest so some can be climatory some can be non climatory where the uh, fruit uh, for example, like some of the fruit, if they still get ripened after the temp uh, after you pluck out the uh, fruit from the tree. So even if you just keep it, they still ripen. But some crops, they do not ripen once you pluck it out from the uh, from the tree or from the main crop. So in that way, this uh, this whole thing or the whole process of ripening process can be done by these presence of light even though it does not need at that point of time it does not need the mother plant to ripen anymore okay so this is how it affects in the post harvest as well um coming to the biomass production by the photosynthetic processes all requires light we all know that for photosynthesis to occur we need to, in the presence of light right um so in the presence of light they take in and the carbon dioxide and give out the oxygen and that's how they make food okay um, even the chlorophyll which is present in the plant one of the major uh, role of the chlorophyll is to uh, take in the sunlight right it's taking the sunlight the, the visible light 
right? And that's how it imparts the green color. Uh, right, the third one here is the visible radiation is very important in photosynthetic, photosynthetic mechanism of plants. So this is also kind of related to the uh, second point itself only. All right, so other than that, all the physical processes like the soil, the water, the plant, the whole of the environment, these are all dependent on the light uh, itself. Okay, uh, another, another thing that I want to talk about here is you will also come, uh, you will also come in the terms of this word known as photopyrrhonism. Are the reaction of the plants towards the length of the light, right? The day length of the light. It's a reaction of plants, right? And on the reaction of the plants towards the light, we can divide them into three major categories. We've already discussed about it in short uh, in our previous lectures. Uh, we can divide them into uh, short day plants, right? Uh, let me just write it short as DP. We have day neutral and we have long day plant. So basically in short day plant, uh, the, the light, the requirement of light that they need to flower or to for the proper growth and development is less than 12 hours. And this 12 hours, uh, this is 12 hours out of 24 hours, okay? It completes a one, one it completes a whole one day and one night, right? So within that, they need only about less than 12 hours, right, to flower uh, naturally. And day neutral, they're not really affected by the day length or the amount of light they're receiving. Uh, example for this, uh, the first one, um, example would be a rice, sunflower, right? Uh, example for this day neutral, I'll give this tomato. And we also have maize. So these are not really affected by the presence of the light. Um, last one out here is the long day plant. So a long day plant, uh, these are the plants which need for more than 12 hours. All right, they need the length of the, uh, the light length of about more than 12 hours. An example would be uh, cabbage, all right. Um, we have carrots. And let me just give it barley. Right, so these are some of the examples of these. Uh, all right, so another example, you also come in the, uh, uh, another, another term that you also come across is phototropism. Phototropism. So uh, phototropism is basically the response of the plant to the direction of the sunlight. All right, uh, and this phototropism can be seen in sunflower. Okay, guys. So notice that whenever you see a sunflower, they have this, they have this tendency of facing towards the sun. All right, so that's the magic. Uh, magical thing about sunflower and that's the reason why it is called sunflower because whenever you grow a sunflower wherever the sun is rising wherever the sun is going the sunflower also faces the sun all right so that's why the name of it came from that itself so they show this peculiar character and feature of phototropism all right i hope that is clear and so this is how the light and the solar radiation affect the uh, normal crop production or the plant. Um, all right, now coming to another one characteristic out here we have is wind velocity. All right, so the wind velocity would be like the direction also, as well as the velocity of the wind at which rate it is going. Um, so the basic characteristic, sorry, so the basic uh, factors or the characters that how it affects on the plant is that the fun first function of the wind is to carry the moisture as well as the heat okay the moisture would be precipitation and as well as the heat okay so the, the wind is 
is responsible for carrying the moisture and the heat which is necessary for the proper building development. Another one here is that this moving wind, it also increases the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere and which thereby is important and necessary for the photosynthetic activity as it can give the plants more of carbon dioxide. Okay, another one here is that the third point is that the wind movement for four to six kilometer per hour is suitable for most of the crowd. So guys, remember again this point, jot it down if you guys haven't jot it down. Um, another point that how wind act actually help is that wind also help in the dispersal of the, sorry, uh, pollens, right, of the pollens uh, from one plant to another, which helps in cross pollination. So this cause this due to the dispersal of the pollen and seeds, it would also help in the uh, cross pollination. Another last one is that it also increases the evaporation, which happens. Uh, there can be a negative. So increasing evaporation would be your negative towards the negative effect or the disadvantages of uh, this wind, and it can positive or advantages can be some of these two here. And this can also help in spread of the diseases as well as the pests. Uh, so what happens is that, let me just give you an example. Um, suppose you are growing a one plant um, out here, right? And this plant is has fungal spores in it, okay? And on the other hand, you have a very healthy plant. <coughs> so it is impossible for these fungal spores to come in contact with these plants. So what happens is that due to this wind velocity or the wind, it can take in the spores of this plant and transfer it to the other plant, which is at a distance because the fungal spores are quite light right so it can be easily transferred here and the same goes for the pest or insect pest as well so this is how the wind velocity can actually have an impact or effect on the uh, crop production or the crop yield um, the last one out here is the atmospheric gases on uh, the plant growth and so when we're talking about the atmospheric gases first we need to understand the constituents of atmospheric gases uh, the first one here is um, carbon dioxide, okay? Carbon dioxide with about 0.03, and we all know the carbon dioxide is necessary for the photosynthetic and food, uh, for making up the food in the plants. Um, we also have oxygen, which is necessary again for it, all the living organisms, be it, be it plants or even animals, right? Um, another one out here is nitrogen. Nitrogen is also one of the major nutrient which is needed uh, for the normal growth and development. This is, uh, in plant terms, we can see we can call them as macronutrients, right? Um, so these are very important. Uh, the these are usually the most important nitrogen is basically the unavailable nitrogen, so which can be due to this process of nitrification or modification, we can actually uh, break it down and make it available for the plants to take in, right? Um, so we also have uh, some of these, of the others, which can include your argon, or we also have SO2 or methane, CH4, which can be your methane, etc. See, the higher the toxic, the higher the level of these gases, the it will be more toxic for the plants, all right? So these are some of the um, features or some of the characteristics of or the role of uh, different atmospheric gases which has an impact on the growth and development of the plant, of the plants or the crop, all right? Um, so that's all for today, guys. Uh, these are some of the factors which affect we'll be continuing with the same chapter uh, in the next session all right and we'll be trying to cover all of the uh, the factors which actually affect the normal growth and development as well as the crop production of 
the plants. All right, so we'll be meeting for the next question. If you guys have any more queries or doubts, don't forget to drop in your queries in our Telegram group and the team will be ready to help. Till then, we'll be meeting for the next session.